Okay. Hey, girls, what? We're gone. We're not done with the interview yet. We're done now. <laughs>But also, yes, that kind of TNA. I was a dedicated watcher. As a matter of fact, while more often than not I'd completely forget to tune into Raw or SmackDown, every Thursday night I'd make sure to tune into Impact. And in October of that year, a new wrestler debuted with the company who made quite an impression. You could even say they made it, and I'm not gonna do it, I'm not gonna make an Impact thing, mainly because I think I have already, probably several times before think that you, the audience, are quite frankly tired of having your intelligence insulted. A wrestler that went by the name of Awesome Kong. This behemoth of a woman debuted, tearing through the TNA women's roster, leaving a pile of unconscious bodies in her wake. She was so dominant and overpowered that no one on the roster seemed to be able to compete with her, you know, outside of Gail Kim. And those two athletes would have amazing matches against each other. Which, keep in mind, this was during a time that WWE was still only promoting their female workers as divas, meaning they were more eye candy than they were actual wrestlers. If you had a pretty face, then you had your place. Sorry guys, but Kelly Kelly just wasn't doing it for me, alright? You can hate me in the comments, but she always came across as a blank Barbie. Anyway, here were those two putting on actual wrestling matches and beating the holy hell out of each other. And while that division wasn't expertly booked, at least they were a part of stories that were being told. Her time with the company was undoubtedly successful, making quite the impression with TNA audiences and wrestling fans in general. In 2008, she became the Pro Wrestling Illustrated's Woman of the Year and was ranked number one in the top 50 female singles wrestlers. Awesome Kong would become a two-time knockouts champion, and a one-time Knockouts Tag Team Champion during her stint there. So imagine my shock, imagine the hype, when I'd seen that she was making her WWE debut. <laughs> In 2011, WWE would begin airing vignettes, of a faceless woman laughing while plucking apart brat stalls. And I knew that cackle anywhere. This was Kong. Or, more accurately as she's been renamed, Karma. Which is fair, you know, there have been worse gimmick names, I guess. You know, they didn't call her Frost McFang, so... There is that. That's, that's a positive in my book. Also, it's, you know, that ominous name that, you know, kind of has meaning to it. Like Mankind, except... It has meaning to it. I was instantly hooked all over again. Here was this monster of a woman, structurally speaking, who's looking to put the fear of God into the Barbie dolls of the Divas division. She was going to be what would kickstart a new day in the company. A woman's revolution, if you will. This is what I convinced myself. Kong, or the newly dubbed Karma, her mere presence was going to shoot the credibility of an entire roster up. And spoiler alert, hate to give it to you guys now, but... I was not right. At Extreme Rules, Karma would make her long-awaited debut, attacking Michelle McCool after her match. She would follow that attack up with additional random assaults on former Divas and Women's Champions on both Raw and SmackDown, which was an impressive start. I mean, she was immediately showcased as a dominant force and a credible threat to every woman employed by the company. Down! Oh man! Oh. And Alicia Fox paying for that mistake. Tried to find some cover, man. Right now, from. Yeah, but this is just this is stupid. I mean, Karma is. Oh. If they've found the solution yet. Oh no! I don't think they're. Karma has gotten to live! 
line. Oh, there it is. That was until she said her first words. After interrupting a tag team match, the next day, I have always wanted to be a mother. As I am currently with child, but I will be back. You're pregnant? <laughs> and I just thought you were really, really fat. Does it bug you right now that you can't beat us up? I really hope when I come back, you too will still be here. Following a very unfortunate miscarriage, Karma would return to the company in 2012 during the Royal Rumble, becoming the third woman ever to enter a Rumble match, eliminating Michael Cole and Hunico before she was tossed out by Dolph Ziggler. And then... She was gone. Karma and the company parted ways after spending the ass end of 2011 all the way to September of 2013 there, never having so much as a singles match during a run. And despite this, she made appearances in both WWE 12 and WWE 13. Despite a solid push to the top immediately, Karma just seemed to fizzle out. To say her time in the company was forgettable is an understatement. And as far as I'm concerned, and as far as a lot of people are concerned actually, it's definitely a missed opportunity. But with all that being said, Maybe it was for the best. I mean, women's wrestling wasn't what it is today in the company. The women on the roster weren't really regarded in the same respect as their male counterparts and needed to rely mainly on sex appeal. Not saying that there wasn't talent there, there obviously was, but there was no way that Karma was going to get the kind of matches she had with Gail Kim in the Divas division. Also, if she ever won the title, just could you imagine what that would look like? Like, here you have Karma and she's walking around with a butterfly belt. Why? That's... That's... that's why? It's almost as bad as when other people walked around with John Cena's spinner belt. It just... it looked weird on some people. Anyway, that is the full story of Karma's incredibly short tenure in the company. So with that being said, I'm the Social Injustice Warrior V Infuso, and if you like the words that came out of my mouth hole, and you too want to become a VTard, don't forget to like and subscribe. There's plenty more where this video came from. Follow me on Twitter because, hell, why not? It's not considered stalking if it's on the internet, am I right? And don't forget to join the Discord. I don't have anything catchy to add to that, but just, just join it. Just go, go do it. And if you have a free moment of time and a free dollar to spare, then head over to my Patreon, where for just one buck, you too could help keep this boat afloat. And if you don't have that dollar, but you do have a free moment of time, then hit the share button. It will help me out tremendously. Vitart, oh.